Good evening, and welcome to tonight's Bible study with Pastor Bowens. This week's announcements are as follows. Please join us as we celebrate the 36th pastoral anniversary for our very own Pastor Ronald L. Bowens and Sister Debbie Bowens in a drive-by celebration. The theme, Preaching in All Seasons of Life, coming from 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. The drive will start promptly at 1.30 p.m. on October 11th. Where? Where else? At Friendship Baptist Church. Please drive by in your decorated vehicles to show your love and appreciation for the under-shepherd of this great church. Happy anniversary, Pastor Bones and Sister Debbie. Extra, extra, read all about it. The FBC Friendship Voice September newsletter is here. In this issue, you will see articles such as Surviving Cancer, Not Once But Twice, My Son, Darrell, No God, No Peace, and my daughter, my dog, and our God, and much, much more. To check out this issue, please go to fbcdeluth.org slash newsletter. If you would like to submit an article for the next newsletter, please contact Paulette Tapp with the information provided below. Happy reading, folks! During these challenging times, the Friendship Baptist Church Outreach Ministry is here to help. Drive through to get free groceries, meat, produce, dairy, and more on Fridays from 3 to 4 p.m. and Saturdays from 11.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. at Friendship Baptist Church on a first-come, first-served basis. Please come on down so we can fill your pantries up. For those impacted by the COVID-19 crisis, help is available at Friendship Baptist Church. The COVID-19 Emergency Relief Program is to help Gwinnett County residents who have been affected by the pandemic. Services include rent and utility arrears, emergency shelter, extended stay, and application fee and security deposit. Applications are now being accepted on Wednesdays from 3 to 5 p.m. and Saturdays from 12.30 to 3.30 p.m. You must bring your state-issued ID, past due notice from landlord or rental and utility company, as well as proof of U.S. citizenship and residency. We pray that God blesses and covers you during this time. Ladies and gentlemen, Election Day is right around the corner. The general election will be held on November 3rd. The deadline to register to vote is October 5th. The absentee voter deadlines are as follows. Application by mail has a deadline of October 30th. Submission by mail and submission in person has a deadline of November 3rd. Early voting will begin on October the 12th and will run until October the 30th. Remember, your vote, your voice. So let it be heard. Get out there and rock the vote. Please join us on Sunday, October 4th, as we observe the Lord's Supper. We ask that you please govern yourselves accordingly and prepare yourself with your elements so we can partake in the Holy Communion. Do this in remembrance of me, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, 24. We have three ways to give. Click, text, mail. You can go online to send your gifts to fbcdeluth.org or text them to fbcdeluth to 73256 or mail your gifts to FBC to P.O. Box 604, Duluth, Georgia 30096. Give cheerfully unto the Lord. 2 Corinthians 9, 7. Be blessed. Good evening to you, my brothers and sisters. I greet you in the awesome name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I want to welcome you again to Wednesday Night Bible Study. We thank God for another awesome day. We thank him for all his many blessings, and it's good to be with you tonight. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask his blessings upon our study tonight. Heavenly Father, we come in your presence now with grateful hearts, and we come to say, Thank you, Lord, for another day and for all the many blessings that you have sent our way. We thank you for every way in life being as well with us as it is. And Father, we ask that you forgive us of all sins that we have committed against thee, that you would create within us a clean heart and renew the right spirit within us. Father, we invite your presence and your power now, and we ask that you would take control by your Holy Spirit that you would lead us and guide us and direct us as you would have us to go. Father, we ask tonight that you'll be glorified in all that is said and done and that your people will be edified and enlightened through your word. 
Father, we thank you for even the trials in life that we have to deal with from time to time. Uh, because through those trials, Lord, we are made strong and we are made wiser and we, we are made better. And so we thank you for everything that you allow to come into our lives and for the opportunity, Lord, that you give us to grow and to mature and develop into uh, Christ-likeness. So we thank you and we glorify your name. And we ask that you would just bless our time together in your word. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Tonight we will continue our study about family trials. Amen. And uh, for the last week or two, we've been dealing with disputes. Amen. We're going to continue that study tonight. We're going to be looking at a New Testament family, uh, Martha and Mary. Amen. We looked at uh, Sarai last week and Hagar. Amen. And so tonight we're going to be looking at Martha and Mary. Amen. And the issue that they have deals with priorities and sharing responsibilities. Amen. And our, our study is going to come from Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. Luke chapter 10, verse 38 through 42. Turn there with me and let's read these verses. Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. Amen. But Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister have left me to serve alone? Bid her, therefore, that she come help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful, and Mary have chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Amen. Have you ever chewed someone out in your family because you felt they were not doing their share or they were not helping in some task that needed to be performed. Everybody in the family was sweating and running around trying to get this task completed. But one person was just sitting around, taking it easy, talking while everybody else was working. Now when this happens, uh, many times stress levels tend, amen, uh, to get very high, and soon trouble will begin. Have mercy on. Sometimes one person in the family gripes and the other says nothing, or both people get into it and argue like crazy. Have mercy on. Uh, disputes have a way of revealing problems that deal with priority matters and failure to carry one's load, have mercy Lord. Now this is what we have here in Luke chapter 10. Martha is very upset with her sister Mary, have mercy Lord. So let's take a peek here and, and see what happened. Martha received the Lord Jesus as guest into her home, which was also, amen, her sister Mary's home. Now, what a blessing that must have been to have Jesus in their home. Amen. By the way, amen. Is Jesus welcome in your home? Amen. I hope he is. Amen. Because uh, our homes need him. Our jobs need him. Amen. Our churches need him. Our communities need him. Amen. The world at large need Jesus, and he need to be welcome everywhere. Amen. 
I believe if we had more Jesus in all of these places, the world would be a much better place. Now, the fact that Martha invited the Lord into her home demonstrated uh, her generosity and her care for others. Amen. It, it reveals that she was a generous person and that she had a lot of compassion and care for other people. Now, it also demonstrates her courage because Jesus was opposed by many of the Jews at this particular time. Amen. Especially those around Jerusalem. Amen. John informs us in John chapter 7 and verse 25 that some of the authorities, those who were in power, were seeking to kill the Lord. Have mercy, Lord. Many of those who claimed to be his disciples, amen, had forsaken him, amen, including some of his own family members, amen. Now, Martha was a, a, a brave woman and, and willing to stick her neck out for the Lord Jesus, amen. She was brave. It just showed her bravery because this was not a time, amen, when people were embracing Jesus, but a lot of people, amen, was bagging up on Jesus. But she showed her bravery, amen, by inviting him into her home. She stuck her, her neck out for Jesus, amen. What about you? Will you stick your neck out for Jesus? When other folks don't think it's popular for you to be talking about him, when you still talk about him, amen. When you still let folk know, let the world know that you love him and that you're not ashamed of him, amen. Now, we are told about the priorities of Mary and her attitude toward Jesus, amen. Mary of Bethany showed up three times in the gospel, amen. Each time we read about her, uh, we find Mary at the feet of Jesus. Amen. Hanging on to every word that's proceeding out of the Lord's mouth. Amen. She, you, 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 whenever you, you find Mary, she's somewhere close. Amen. To the feet of the Lord. Hanging on. Amen. To every word that's coming out of his mouth. Now, she sat at Jesus' feet. And she listened to him. Amen. Now, this meant that she was a disciple, amen, of Jesus. She was a follower of Christ. And she was eager to learn from him, amen, and, and to get instruction from him and, and get instruction from his teaching, hammer said on. Uh, uh, uh. So, so, so she was always around his feet learning, amen, uh, uh, trying to get understanding, and, and, and I believe trying to become a better person, amen. Now, notice that Martha, she started out, amen, listening to Jesus. Now, this is where she started, too. Uh, if you look at Luke chapter 10 and verse 39, uh, it says, and she had a sister called Mary, amen which also, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. Amen. Now, the key word here is also. Amen. So, Mary also sat at Jesus' feet. Watch this. Just as Martha did. But something changed. Amen. Look at verse 40. Amen. Luke 10 and verse 40. Uh, but Martha was cumbered about with serving, have mercy, Lord, and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister have left me to serve alone? She have left me alone to do all of this serving. And she says, bid her Therefore, that she help me. Amen. Uh, make her come help me. Amen. Now, notice that Martha was no longer at the feet of Jesus. Amen. Luke says she was cumbered with much 
serving. Amen. Now, what does this mean? Uh, the word cumbered here is from a Greek word which means to be drawn away here and there, to be twisted, uh, wrapped up, to be distracted, to be over occupied. Have mercy, Lord. It is in the perfect tense, amen, which means she continually, she was continually distracted. Amen. She was continually over-occupied. She was continually tied up in knots, watch this, and stressed. Amen. Have mercy on. Now, this describes to me the lives of so many Christians tonight. Amen. Watch this, especially some pastors and preachers and teachers of the word. Uh, those who work in the church and serve God, many of them, amen, are distracted. Many of them are overoccupied. Many are tied up in knots and full of stress. Amen. Now, I believe Martha really wanted to hear what Jesus had to say. Amen. I really do. I believe she really wanted to hear what he had to say. But she felt that she needed to prepare an elaborate meal for the Lord and his disciples. Amen. She wanted to sit there and listen, but she felt also that she needed to prepare this big Sunday dinner. Amen. Amen. Now, a simple meal would have been fine. Amen. She could have gave them a bologna sandwich. Amen. Uh, uh, she could have gave them some hot dogs or and some poking beans. Amen. Uh, something very simple. Amen. Uh, maybe a fish sandwich or something. Uh, uh, but she uh, was cumbered about uh, making this big meal. Martha. Amen. She, she was a very generous person. But she went overboard. Amen. And found herself busy, watch this, but not blessed. Amen. She was busy, but she was not blessed. Uh, her bitterness, amen, became bitter. Amen. She was not serving God with gladness, with joy. Amen. Uh, 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 uh. She, was, she was busy, amen, but she was not enjoyed it. So she was not blessed in her busyness. Now, she was all wrapped up in preparing this meal to the point, have mercy Lord, uh, that she was totally stressed out. Amen. It got to her. It stressed her out. She was so stressed that she took out her frustration. Watch this on her sister. Have mercy on. Uh, stress and frustration tend to lead to trials in your home. Amen. Uh, uh, you get stressed at work. Uh, you get stressed, amen, at church. When you get stressed, uh, amen, and you bring that home and you take it out on those who are close to you. Be careful about that. Now, Martha's service to the Lord Jesus became a distraction from spending time with him. Watch this. Uh, 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 her service to the Lord, amen, became a distraction from spending time with him. What she really needed was more time with the Lord. Amen. She needed more time with the Lord. Now, her priorities got messed up. Her work for the Lord pulled her away from the Lord of the work. Have mercy, Jesus. Her work for the Lord pulled her away from the Lord of the work. And that's not good, my brothers and sisters. If this happens to us, we too 
can get twisted and knotted up on the inside. Amen. We can become bitter. We can become angry. We can become frustrated. And we'll take all of those emotions out on other people. Amen. Now, the solution to our imbalance is not to stop serving the Lord. Because sometimes when we become frustrated, we become angry and bitter and all of this stuff, we think about, you know, not serving anymore. That's not the answer. Amen. The solution to our imbalance is not to stop serving the Lord, but to make sure, watch this, that we spend time with him. Amen. Balance your service for Christ. Amen. With your intimacy and your walk with Christ. Amen. Uh -uh. Get close to him. Amen. Love on him. Amen. Uh -uh. Build your relationship with him. Now, this is what, this is what Martha failed to do in this situation. Amen. She needed more time at the feet of Jesus. And it's revealed in her frustration, in her stress, in her attitude. She needed to spend more time in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Now, in trying to be a blessing, watch this, to the Lord, she stopped being a blessing because of her griping and her disputes. Amen. Now, she really was trying to be a blessing, but she stopped being a blessing because she started to gripe and she started this dispute. Amen. And, and it turned from blessing almost to bitterness. Amen. Now, have you stopped being a blessing to your family, to your friends, because you gripe and you argue all the time. Amen. You wake up in the morning griping and complaining and arguing and fussing. Amen. You go through the day doing the same thing. You come back home at night. You're griping. You're complaining. You're fussing. Amen. All the time. Husbands, do you argue with your wife a lot? Wives, are you nagging and complaining about your husband all the time? Kids, do you argue? Do you sass? Do you give those evil looks? Do you say things under your breath that you should not say? You know, do you yell at your parents because you don't get your own way? Or you're punished for something you did wrong? Have mercy, Lord. Martha became so irritated that she had a bone to pick with Jesus as well as her sister Mary. Amen. She had a bone to pick with both of them. She became so irritated. Amen. She became so frustrated that she had a bone that she wanted to pick with Jesus and with Mary. Now, she probably caught bits and pieces of what Jesus was saying, and she wanted to hear more of what he was saying, but she felt that her duty was to get in the kitchen and get everything ready for her guest. Amen. She probably would hear something more and, 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 and wanted to be in there. Amen. But she felt pulled Amen. To get in the kitchen and prepare, and prepare this big meal. Have mercy, Lord. Now, Mary, watch this, had done her part. She had done her share of the work in the kitchen. And then she went to feed on the Lord's teaching. Amen. She stayed in there long enough to do uh, what she felt was necessary to get done. And then she went in there where Jesus was and sat at his feet to feed on the words that were coming out of his mouth. Amen. Somehow she knew that man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Now watch this. Martha 
fell neglected after Mary left the kitchen and she began to complain. She felt neglected because she was left alone, amen, to do all of that cooking and, 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 and all that preparation, amen, for the Lord, for this big dinner. And so she felt neglected and she began to complain. She accused the Lord of not caring, watch this, about her. Amen. And she scolded Jesus for not telling Mary to help her out. Have mercy, Lord. Now, Martha was running around like a chicken with no head. Uh, while Mary was sitting around, amen, having fun and listening to the Lord. Amen. Now, Martha was so busy serving Jesus, but she was not blessed because her priorities got out of whack. Have mercy on her. She was busy, amen, but she was not blessed. She became very selfish and critical, amen. And notice the words, amen. My, me, and me. Have mercy on. Now, again, uh, Martha said these words: "My, me, and me." Now, when she neglected her time with Christ, she became burdened down. Uh, she became tired. She became tensed, and she became critical. Amen. Does that describe you tonight? Amen. Burdened, tired, tense, critical. Have mercy at all. Now, she became this way because she did not sit long enough at the feet of Jesus. Amen. Had she stayed there probably a little while longer, her attitude would have been different. Amen. And I believe this is why we can become so bitter. We can become so angry. We can become so stressed and frustrated because we don't spend enough time with Jesus. Amen. Uh, 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 her words, my, me, and me. Amen. It's in the text. Uh, uh, uh. When she neglected her time with Christ. Amen. Uh, this is what caused her to become burdened. This is what because, uh, caused her to become somewhat bitter. Amen. And, 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 and tired and, and tensed and critical. Amen. Uh, 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 uh. Does that describe you tonight? Are you mean like Mr. Scrooge? I believe when we become like Mr. Scrooge and we become mean like this and we become bitter, it's because we need more time with Jesus. We, we, our priorities are not where they should be. We are choosing the lesser part over the greater part. Amen. Now, if serving Christ makes us selfish and difficult to live with, then something is wrong, amen, with our service, amen. If you are bitter, griping, critical, and complaining all the time about those who are serving Christ, about your church, you need to take a close look at what is going on in your heart, amen. Something is wrong somewhere. Lord have mercy. Now, I believe God's major reason, or uh, excuse me, God's major concern, amen, is not our activity or our doing. Amen. I believe God is, is all that concerned about our activity or, or, or what we're doing. He's more concerned about our being and he wants and, and, and what he wants us to be. Amen. He's more concerned about our being and what he wants us to be. Amen. 
Now, Martha was concerned about doing. Amen. And that is important, my brothers and sisters, because if, if nobody does it, nothing gets done. Amen. Now, Mary was more focused on being. Amen. She was more focused on being. Amen. Now, this must come before, amen, our doing. Being must come before our doing. Now, what we do with the Lord is more important than what we do for the Lord. Have mercy, Lord. Now, our relationship with him is to be our priority. We have to spend time with him. If we don't spend time with him, amen, all of that busyness is not going to mean anything. It's just going to make us bitter. Amen. It's going to make us, it's, it's, it's going to make us uh, 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 resentful. It makes us critical. And it's because we're not spending enough time, amen, with him in his word. Amen. So, 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 God is concerned about our relationship. Amen. And our relationship with him is to be, amen, a top priority. Now, Service is important, but it is a natural byproduct of what God wants us to be. Amen. Let me say it again. Service is important, but it is a natural byproduct of what God wants us to be. Amen. Doing comes from being. Amen. Uh, doing should come from being. Now, this is the reason why it is so important to spend time with God and grow in faith and in the word of God. Amen. If you don't do this, you will spiritually dry up. Amen. You will be joyless. Amen. And when you do serve the Lord, you won't do it with joy. You won't do it with gladness. Amen. You do it out of bitterness. Amen. And the Lord don't want our service to be like that. Have mercy, Lord. Commitment starts in the heart. Amen. Commitment starts in the heart. If God doesn't have your heart, he doesn't have you. Amen. Now, Martha was a mess, and Jesus confronted her about her condition. Amen. I'm not picking on Martha. Amen. But she was a mess, and the Lord confronted her about her condition. He told her bluntly what was, amen, wrong with her. Amen. He did not beat around the bush. He did not sugarcoat it. Amen. Now, the fact that the Lord rebuked her for being frustrated, distracted, stirred up, and worried should cause us to sit up and take notice because he doesn't want us to be this way either. Have mercy on He don't want us to be like that. Amen. We make life miserable for ourselves and for other people around us when we get into this uh, dispute mode. When we get into that mode of dispute where we want to dispute everything, we want to argue about everything, we want to fight about everything, amen, uh, that's a miserable place for, for us to be because it makes us miserable and it makes those around us miserable, amen. Now, in verse 42, notice what the Lord said. He says, but one thing is needful and Mary have chosen that good part, which shall not, have mercy, Lord, be taken away from her. Now, the Lord says she's chosen the good part, and this good part shall not be taken away. I'm not going to, 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 to ask her to come into the kitchen and do that, amen, which is least important are less important, amen, than what she's doing right here, amen. The Lord told Martha that one thing is needful. 
In other words, a simple, plain meal would have been fine. A bologna sandwich, a peanut butter jelly sandwich uh, would have been fine. Not this big, elaborate meal. Amen. This, this big dinner. Amen. Uh, uh, tonight wasn't the night. Today wasn't the day. Amen. Uh, 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 the Lord, uh, no doubt, uh, felt like, okay, uh, you know, you, you, if you want to cook us a meal like that, you know, you have to invite us back sometimes when you can plan it uh, more efficiently. But tonight, if you wanted to give us a, 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 a sandwich or something, that would have been great. Amen. And you still would have been blessed. But now you're bitter, you're angry, you're upset. Amen. You're frustrated and you're taking it out on your sister because she chose the better part. Now, Jesus, watch this, did not blame Martha for being concerned about preparing a meal. Amen. He did not scold her for attempting to make him and his disciples feel welcome. Amen. He did want her to understand that because she was so upset, hammer said on, she was not making time for what was most important. Amen. She was busy, but she was not blessed. Amen. She was busy working, busy serving, but she was stressed. She was frustrated. She was aggravated and irritated at her sister. Amen. Uh, so she, she was not blessed. She was too stressed to be blessed. Amen. Amen. She, 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 she did not spend enough time, amen, with Jesus. And sometimes, my brothers and sisters, when we're not spending enough time with Jesus, it shows up in our behavior. It shows up in our actions. It shows up in our attitudes. It shows up in the way that we're short with people, amen, and how frustrated and irritated we get by uh, 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 what people are doing, what uh, uh, others are doing. So, so we have to spend the proper time at the feet of Jesus. He wanted Martha to understand that because she was so upset, she was not making time for what was most important. She was busy, but she was not blessed. Have mercy, Lord. Jesus wanted Martha, watch this, to rearrange her priorities. Amen. Now, Mary chose the good part, and that would not be taken away from her. Mary chose to sit down and listen to what the Lord had to say. Amen. She chose to nourish her life with spiritual food. Amen. That could not be taken away from her. She hungered for the words of God. Amen. And she sat there and was fed. Now, uh, uh, Jesus says, they that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be fed. Amen. Shall be filled. See, when you have a hunger for the word, when you have a thirst for the word, God will satisfy your hunger. He will satisfy your thirst. Amen. He wants us hungry for the word. Amen. And this requires that we spend time at his feet. My brothers and sisters, as I close our study for tonight, this passage tonight is about having a balance of proper priorities in our life. Amen. God wants us to learn to listen to him, to spend time with him, and to get guidance from him. Amen. When he guides us, then we ought to do what he leads us to do. Amen. That would not be the time to sit around and do nothing. Amen. We need to learn to spend time with the Lord, watch this, and enjoy his presence. Because in his presence is fullness of joy. Amen. You ought to get some joy when you, when you spend time with the Lord. And I believe you will. If you get into his presence, because going into his presence is like nothing else. 
Amen. Nobody can give you the joy that the Lord can give you. Nobody can get you excited like the, like the Lord can get you excited. Amen. There's something about being in his presence. Amen. It blesses you tremendously. Now, that is what Mary did. Mary had learned, amen, that if I can get in his presence and if I can get a word from him, uh, uh, I'll be all right. Amen. And this is what she wanted to do. She, she, she placed that over everything else. Uh, even her sister getting upset with her. Amen. She placed sitting at his feet. Amen. To be above all of that. Now, without spending time with Christ, you may end up being busy. You might even end up being bothered. You might even end up being bitter. But you will not be blessed if you don't spend time with the Lord. You'll end up being too stressed to be blessed. And we want that to be the other round. We other way around. We want to be too blessed to be stressed. And that means we have to spend time with the Lord. Amen. Now, this brings our study to an end for tonight. Now, next week, we're still going to be looking at trials in the family, family trials. And next week, we're going to be talking about rejection and dejection. Amen. Uh, these things that, 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 that family members have felt, amen, when they were rejected, when they were dejected, when they were made to feel less than who they were, amen. We're going to be talking about that next week, amen. Well, God bless you, and thank you so much for tuning in and, 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 and being a part of our study, and we look forward to, to meeting you back here on next week if the Lord says the same. Now, until then, you keep praying and you spend some time at the feet of Jesus. Be like Mary. Amen. Choose the better part. Choose that which is greatest. Choose that which is more important. Amen. For man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. God bless you until the next time. Amen. Amen. For more information about Pastor Bowens, church leaders, the bulletin, the newsletter, resources, and announcements, please visit our website at www.fbcdeluth.org. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you were blessed by the service. We look forward to having you join us again. Have a blessed week.